Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Safety While Climbing, the third webinar in our Ladder Safety Webinar Series in partnership with Werner. My name is Pam O'Brien, and I'm here from the American Ladder Institute. I'll be passing things over shortly to Chad Lingerfeld, National Job Site Safety and Security Manager at Werner, who will lead today's presentation. Before we begin, a few quick introductions and announcements. For those of you unfamiliar with the American Ladder Institute, ALI for short, it is a not-for-profit association dedicated to promoting the safe use of ladders. Its members are affiliated with the ladder and ladder component manufacturing industry, and ALI is the American National Standards Institute approved developer of ladder safety standards. Each March, the ALI and its partners sponsor National Ladder Safety Month, a campaign all about promoting the safe use of ladders both at home and at work. This year is the fifth celebration of National Ladder Safety Month, and we are excited to bring you this series of webinars covering how to choose, how to safely choose and use ladders. ALI partnered with, Web, with Werner on this series. Werner actively advocates for ladder safety and accident prevention through their range of innovative product solutions, in-person training, and online educational programs. Finally, before I pass it over to Chad, we will be take, taking and answering questions throughout this presentation. Please use the Q&A tool on your screen at the bottom to submit questions. We will also leave room at the end of the presentation for any follow-up or remaining questions. We will also be sharing the recording and slides of this presentation with all attendees later this week via email. You can also find them online at LadderSafetyMonth.com. Next slide, please. Our presenter for today's webinar is Chad Lingerfeld, National Job Site and Security Manager. Chad has over 35 years of experience in job site safety. He started his career with 21 years of service in the Air Force, which is the only military branch to have a full-time safety crew. Today, he leads Werner's, Werner Co.'s 36-member job site safety team nationally. Chad has a passion for adding value to the lives of others, which is demonstrated through his numerous mentoring initiatives and his mission work in India. With that, I'll pass it over to Chad. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. I'm so glad you joined us today. Before our presentation here at Wernicke, we'd like just to share one of our core values here. And today I would like to share, we care for our customer, our end user, and the communities we live in. So today I hope you see this through the training. One of the key things is we want to make sure everyone goes home at the end of the day, each day, and through safety training, we believe we can help do this. Once again, thank you for joining me today. Today, we'll be talking about ladder safety while climbing. So two weeks ago, OSHA released at the NSC, released the OSHA top 10 for 2020. And as you can see, number five is still on the hit list when it comes to ladders. So we still have a long ways to go when it comes to ladder safety, ensuring that everyone goes home at the end of the day. A couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, Mike Melton, as you can see here, he brought to you how to choose a ladder, which is so important. And if you missed that, as I said earlier, it's for those who missed it, you can go to warnerco.com at the bottom of the page here and see uh, the pro climbing and you can sign up for Warner training and uh, be able to capture some of that training that was given there. Also last week, Milt, which is extremely important, Milton Deaces told you how to inspect and set up your ladder. So please always make sure you inspect your ladder. And to help with that, once again, you can go to warnerco.com and bring up uh, under the, pro, the Climbing Pro and bring up the inspection and how to inspect and a good form here to, to help you walk yourself through that. So please, if you're not doing that now, please do that. So today, as we walk through this and we talk about some of the things we need to do to make sure we stay safe while climbing, the, form, the very first one is always try your best to have three points of contact at all times. That's two feet and a hand, two hands and a feet. Whatever you need to do to make sure you do this, please do that. Always face the ladder when climbing up or down. It's amazing when I go across the country, I see people doing all kinds of things on ladders, running down, literally I, a couple of weeks ago, I actually saw someone running down an extension ladder, fa uh, not facing the ladder, facing away. 
just make sure your people and yourself is doing that. Make sure you stay facing the ladder. Never walk a ladder. Not only is this unsafe, it damages the ladder. Just in case you don't know what that means, that's when we take an A-frame ladder and we hop it around. We stay on the first step or the second step and we don't get off the ladder and we hop it around to get to the next spot we need to get to. It's very dangerous, number one. I've seen numerous accidents where people broke ankles, all kinds of things, missed work just because of walking a ladder. So please take the time, step off the ladder, move it where it needs to be, and then step back up. Make sure your belt buckles in between the rails. As you can see in the picture, you know, the joke about the, the guy trying to do a ballerina move here, it's not, it might be funny, but it's definitely not safe. So please keep your we always tell everybody to keep their belt buckle on the inside of the rails. That way you're not extending yourself out past the, the safe zone. Another big one for me is the two top steps of a, a, of a step ladder are not to be used. And on an extension ladder, that's the top three. We see this all the time where those have the rung ladder that Mike Melton talked to us about a, a couple of weeks ago. Once again, make sure you have the right ladder for the job. Sitting or standing on top of the ladder it does not give you three points of contact and is also very dangerous. I'm that guy when I walk into a shopping mall or somewhere and I see one sitting on top of a ladder, my wife goes one way, I go straight to the person sitting on top of the ladder and let them know they're doing some unsafe. Now, I always try to get their supervisor if I can. So once again, this is one of the major issues. Go back to that OSHA top 10 where ladders are number five. Uh, this is one of the ones that we see all the time being written up. Avoid setting up ladders in doorways, pedestrians, or any type of path of heavy equipment, such as forklifts. If you must do this, and if you have to work in these areas where heavy traffic is coming through or someone's driving forklift equipment, et cetera, I would highly suggest that you put up cones around you at least 10 feet back, and then if all possible, have a safety spotter, if any way possible at all. Any questions at this time? Yes, um, we do have one question. Okay. Can, you use, can you use the top two steps of a ladder when using it to enter an attic space? Never can you use the top two, never. It has to go either three or that. You need to have get the proper. Um, that's a tough one. I understand those people have to access the, la the attics. But a lot of times what they'll do, they'll get the ladder, the, the A-frame to go all the way to the top and then they don't have to use the top. They can step up from the third step up into the attic. So no, any more? Not at this time. Okay, all right. And if we're ever unsure, please, please always uh, look at the labels. And the other big thing is just ask someone, ask for help if we don't understand. So the next one here is setting up the ladder. We, you talked about that uh, milk did last week, but just once again, I wanna cover it real quickly here, how to properly angle the ladder, the four to one ratio. So every four feet we go up, we need to come out one foot. And as you can see at the little uh, diagram there to the right, how important this is. And a lot of people will take, just to give some idea how to do that, they'll take their feet and put against the bottom of the ladders. We're talking extension ladders now, put their feet against the bottom, hold their palms straight out at a 90 degree angle. And then if, when they can touch the ladder, both their feet and their hands at the same time, it's pretty close to a bit of 45, not uh, at the angle that needs to be. Not always, but very close to help you with, to understand that. And then you need three rungs above the roof line. As you can see in the picture there also, the three, three feet above, uh, when ascending or descending, doesn't matter. I had the question last week, that does only apply when you're going up. That's not true. It's also ascending and descending. Always make sure your feet are flat on level, ground. Um, we make different types of levelers for this. If you, if you cannot, for the extension ladders, just make sure you have the right equipment and make sure your feet are flat on the ground when, when it comes to the ladder. When loading and unloading, take caution and always be very cautious of your surroundings, especially on the roof. Uh, be paying attention to we, when you get on the ladder and getting off the ladder. Don't be looking at everything else. Just look where you're going. And I, once again, as I go across the country, I see multiple, multiple injuries because of this. Someone gets distracted. Someone yells at them, et cetera. And then they step and then they're, they miss the ladder completely or et cetera. So please make sure that happens. And then check the flippers. In case you know what the flippers here, we're talking about the extension ladder. This is where the 
uh, as it goes up and down and they hook in, that's the flippers. And then make sure you rope. Anytime you have anything greater than an 18 foot extension ladder, you must have a rope. And um, the feet must be secure also, once again, and flat on the ground. And then we're talking about at the top of the ladder. Secure the ladder at the top if possible, especially when it comes to high winds, et cetera, or whatever area you might be working in. The weather can change. Just if you, any way possible, you can tie that extension ladder off and there's multiple ways to do that. We don't have time to talk about that today, but uh, once again, you can go to our website and we'll help you with that. Ensure ladder is clean from slippery materials such as asphalt, from shingles, et cetera, or liquids. Uh, on our same website, as we just talked about, there's a ways to clean your ladder and different types of forms that you can download there for that. And this last one, which is a huge one we see quite often, it's probably in the top three of the list that I see as I go across the country. Always only one person on a ladder at a time unless it's designed. We do make a twin ladder, uh, A-frame ladder that two people can be on at the same time, like mechanical, et cetera, to work like that. But if it's not designed for two people, which most of the time it's not, only one person can be on that ladder at a time. We have a really good friend in Texas who um, they did roofing and uh, they had a 36 foot ladder and they would have three people at a time carrying shingles up on that ladder. So that's definitely, you cannot, once again, I'm going to say you cannot do that. You can only have one person on a ladder at a time. Any questions now? No additional questions at this time. Okay. So this next page is uh, very interesting. Um, I hear it quite often. I just want to make sure we're crystal clear here. Uh, ladders are available in different duty ratings and based on the load capacity. There are five duty ratings that are uh, recognized by ANSI and used by all manufacturers, just not one of them. We'll say that again with all manufacturers. We want to make sure the end user considers not only their weight, but the weight of the materials they're carrying and considering the weight of the color system, as you can see below here. Uh, I highly suggest uh, here especially in the construction world and the industrial world, never ever use anything under a 300 pound capacity ladder. Um, or, and then of course we sell 250 and 225 for home use, but I still suggest to make sure you know what you're using the ladder for and make sure as we just, what we just talked about, your weight and the material weight is not exceeding that ladder. Very important. I, I did have a question. Okay. Um, is the one person on the ladder based on weight? Not necessarily just the weight, but the danger of people moving, tilting the ladder over, uh, bouncing the ladder, et cetera. So the weight is concerned, but also the safety factor of the other things of moving, tossing someone off a ladder, et cetera, when two people are doing two different things. Is that good? No other questions? All right. Good. All right. And here on the labels, uh, I can't tell you how important the labels are. And um, as, you, as you walk through the and think about this, the labels are so important. It tells you so much on there. It tells you the reach, the maximum reach. It tells you uh, the height of the ladder, et cetera. But the most important thing is going to tell you the weight, the capacity of the ladder. So, um, Please make sure you pay attention to that. And then we've gave you over to the right there. We gave you some things to let you look at a bundle of shingles, weigh 70 pounds, the different coatings, et cetera, toolbox. Uh, another big one that we see a lot uh, is, is plywood. Most people don't realize how hot, heavy plywood is. So make sure you know the weight of yourself and what you're putting on the ladder and ensuring that we're not over uh, putting too much weight on that ladder. This was very interesting, and I wanted to put this in here uh, today. Something that came from uh, the ANSI org uh, blog, blog that's out there. And it's, I think it's about maybe two years old at the most. You can Google this, or you can go, as you can see on their blog, ANSI.org at the bottom. But it's the top five most incidents, causes of ladder incidents here. So I thought this was pretty good. And number one, which I see a tremendous amount, missing the last step of a ladder when climbing down. I want us to really think about that, missing the last step or missing a step, period. Uh, once again, if you're not facing the ladder, you can easily do this. But people, it mostly happens when descending, as my experience, I can't say that for everybody, but as my experience, if I, as I go across and train, a lot of people get in a hurry, 
they forget about the last step or they or they miss a step when descending. So really talk this up with your people at work or wherever you're at or your people at work for you or even at home. Make sure you take the time, slow down, hit every step as you're going up and coming down. Overreaching. I'm going to read some of these. I'm, I normally don't like to read. I'm a trainer, so I normally don't like to read it, but these are pretty good, so I'm going to read them right off the screen here. It says, overreaching while on the ladder when working from a ladder. Keep the center of gravity and the body between the side rails. If you can easily reach the project area once you have ascended the ladder, climb down the ladder and move the ladder closer to the pro project. So a lot of times, go back to the walking the ladder. We also have another uh, thing in the construction where we talk a lot about jumping the extension ladder. You'll see people who actually try to jump the extension ladder. We'll also see people go to the roof and, and take and pick the ladder up from the roof and move it over where they need to go, which is not very good because what are you doing then? You're allowing the, uh, the ladder to extend out or down or not lock in. So not a very good idea. So make sure we talk about this also. And number three, the ladder in the not right size for the job. One of the factors in determining the right ladder for the job is the length. We've talked about this and Mike talked about this a couple weeks ago. The key thing here is when you're selecting and calculate the maximum reach, and the best way to do this is four feet higher than the person is high, how high, how tall the person is. So pretty a big deal there. And then number four, the ladder was not firm on level ground. Clear the trash in the areas. And believe it or not, we see this more, uh, or I hear, I shouldn't say see, but I hear this more, not just from construction side, but at home when people are putting up Christmas lights, et cetera, during Christmas time, uh, making sure, uh, not, not making sure that the ground is level their own and they'll go up and the ladder will be sideways, et cetera. Uh, obstruction, power lines, tilting the ladder back into things. The base of the ladder should be safely secured to prevent accidental movement. You can also use a ladder with non-slip feet or additional uh, levelers as we talked about earlier for extension ladders to increase the footprint. So this is Jay, a, easy, yes. Could you advance your slide? Um, they're only looking at numbers one through three. Thank there you. we go. Thank you. Thank you. It didn't go forward. Thank you. For that. <laughs> so uh, just making sure that their feet, you know, do not slip and the levelers on the bottom extension ladder is to increase the footprint, which is a big deal. And this is, can be added to the ladder uh, as long as you follow it in directions. And the number five, three points of contact, which we started off with today, uh, not used when climbing the ladder. Always maintain three points of contact, two hands a foot, two feet and a hand. When climbing up and down the ladder, this allows you to maintain your balance. And that goes back to the person who asked the question about two people on the ladder. Balance is a big thing when you're on the ladder. Whenever you're someone stepping up or down or bouncing or hammering or working, it can really cause issues big time. We have a few questions. Okay. Um, the first one is, what kind of ladder attachments are available for both extension ladders and A-frame? And where can I find them? Um, the easiest way to find them, I'll answer that first, that's easy for me to answer, is just go to warnerco.com and go to accessories, and then it'll come up and it'll tell you where you can buy those products. But there's multiple different ones. We have, for the A-frames, we have all kinds. And I mean, I, it would take me probably, I'm not exaggerating, five or six minutes to explain everything that's on there. But we have things for paint buckets that can go in the top of our A-frame ladders for helping paint, for electricians. We have all different types of stuff to go there. And the tops of our, uh, on our A-frames, we also have different holes to put different things and tools, et cetera. As we know, dropped objects are becoming a much bigger thing here now. So we do have different type of buckets, different size of buckets to go on the A-frames. We have some of those on the extension ladders. We have uh, uh, hooks. We have um, different types of painting hooks to go on there. And then we also have stabilizers for extension ladders that go on the top of the ladder to help stabilize the ladder when it's leaning against the a building, et cetera. But the best way to do is go to warnerco.com and go to the ladder section and look at accessories. Okay, next question. Um, why, as for the labels listed, they get worn off. Is OSHA handing out fines if the labels are missing? like weight rating, instructions, et cetera? Yes, that is. I have known OSHA to do that, and we do sell those separately um, from your local dealer or whoever you deal with when it comes to that. Yes, that can be a fine. 
Um, I, it all depends on the state 90% of the time. I've seen it so different as once again, I, there's not too many states that I haven't been in over the last four years. Uh, as I go across the country, it's a big deal because the key thing there is you don't know what the rating of the ladder is. As long as you can find, as long as you know what the rating is and you can get that label, you can replace it. Um, again, related to labels, what 1910.23 standard is cited for labels? That goes back to carrying. And, I, and if that person, whoever that is, if you can give me a, uh, an email or something, I can email them and have them exactly sent exactly what that is. But OSHA, most of the time, OSHA can go back to the catch-all OSHA, if you will, to, to write that up when it comes to making sure everyone goes home, so. Okay, and one more. What is a root on the ladder? What's a root? I don't understand. Maybe it's foot. Okay. What is a foot on the ladder? Yeah. I would think maybe. Okay. So that, <laughs> I'll go back here and show on here is the front foot of the ladder. Can you see my screen now? I'm showing the feet, that's the feet of the ladder. And then what I was talking about is take your foot and put here and then you can hold your arms out straight out. And that's how you know, especially over here on the extension ladder is what I was talking about. And if that's what that question is for to get your four to one. Okay. Um, uh, it said, he said when he moves it, don't grab the root. Does that make sense? No, I, I said when I, I said on the roof, maybe he misunderstood me. Oh, when the roof. The, when the you're roof. on the roof, maybe my southern draw came through too strong. I'm sorry. <laughs> so okay. When you're on top of the roof and you're pulling it across, they're, instead of being on the ground, they're on top of whatever they're doing and they're pulling the uh, the extension ladder across and, and trying to keep from having to go all the way back down and move it over. That's what I was talking about, the roof. I apologize if you misunderstood me. That makes sense. No more questions at this time. Okay. So that was my last slide. So if there's any questions, if we can be in help of any way, once again, you can go to warnerco.com. You, you can sign up for our training and we'll be in contact with you. And uh, we can actually come out and do live training for you. It was stated at the beginning of this. Thank you for your time today. And I will turn it back over to you, unless there's any more questions. Okay, well, we'll, we'll give them a couple more. Oh, here's a question. Okay. Can we see slide two? Um, somebody joined late. Okay. This slide? Um, I guess so. Once again, this just came out uh, two weeks ago on Friday. So pretty big deal. We finally, it's been, it's been, OSHA took OSHA with COVID and everything. It usually comes out in November, uh, last of October, first of November, but they finally got this out this year. I will also note that um, Warner has listed the link to the accessories and also the training page in the okay. chat. Okay. Okay, have some more questions. Can you straddle the top of the extension ladder when you are on the roof? You're, you're supposed to step to the left or to the right of the ladder when you're when kind of stepping off of that. Only time you can straddle that is if you have the extensions that go on top where you can walk through it. I don't know if, you, if, if everybody's familiar with that, but that is, there is some extensions you can put on that adds the three feet that you can walk through instead of around. But you cannot straddle, no sir. Okay. If I have a 20 foot extension ladder, two 10 foot long sections, does it require a rope and pulley? Anything above 18 feet is supposed to have a rope. That's, that's ANSI, as we build them, that's the ANSI standard. Okay, how much overlap is required for my 20 foot extension ladder? Three feet at the top. And uh, if whatever it's designed to stop at, the ladder should be designed to stop. If you're talking about where it puts it together, if that's what they're talking about. Okay. 
Can you explain the fireman's rule for setting up the ladder at the proper angle? Uh, the only rule we really talk about is the four to one. Okay. Um, and the last question, my step ladders have tread on the top steps. Why is that if I shouldn't use them? That's a great question. <laughs> I'm a safety guy. I've been doing this for 35 years. And, and, and unfortunately, I'm gonna give you the best answer I can. Unfortunately, to keep that ladder stable and sturdy, those, those, those steps have to be in there. And that's why and it's all made from the same material and made the same way. So that's why that is there. So I agree. Uh, we've, we've discussed doing mul multiple different things from taking them out, which we can't because of the, the way the ladder's designed. Uh, we're looking at that and then maybe even painting them a different color. So we thought of all kinds of different things and we'd love to hear your suggestions if you have any. Okay, one more. Um, have you seen the NIOSH ladder safety app? Have you used it? And would you recommend it? Yes, I. when I teach competent person training, yes, I like it. And uh, I, I take it they're talking about the angle from your ladder. It's a really good app, I think. Uh, I, I, I like it a lot. So yes, I would recommend it. It's good, whoever said that, that's very good. It's a great app. Uh, I don't see any additional questions, so um, I'll close it up here. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today and Chad for sharing his expertise with us. The next and final webinar in our ladder safety series takes place next Tuesday, March 23rd, and will focus on safety at the top. You can register for this webinar at laddersafetymonth.com under participate, schedule events. There, you can also find the recordings of this and previous webinars. Uh, next slide. Maybe this, there we go. Um, you can also find more ladder uh, safety resources, including free online training at laddersafetymonth.com and laddersafetytraining.org. We'll be sending each of you a follow-up survey. It would mean a lot to us if you would take a few minutes to provide us with your feedback on this presentation. With that, I bid you happy National Ladder Safety Month and thank you again for joining us today.